for this for quite a long time now and finally today you're gonna get a tour of my ultimate moto camper van build we've done the four episode build series but there's a lot of details I've left out and probably haven't really given you a great picture of the uh, whole thing I got bugs flying all over my face right now but uh, anyway I've been living in it for about six months already so I've got a pretty good idea of the things that work the things that could maybe work a little better but Nonetheless, I'm gonna give you guys a tour and we'll go through everything. So we'll go over the outside of the vehicle very quickly. There's nothing crazy done. I wanted to keep things as stealth as possible. But anyway, I've got 600 watts of solar panels on the roof, two max air fans, one in the front above the bed and one in the rear above my shower. On the front, I put a, a big wide light bar, which honestly is pretty crappy. The rear one is quite handy though if you're loading and unloading at night. On the back, I've got this uh, custom made gas can carrier that can hold two six gallon uh, fuel jugs. This is super helpful keeping all that raw fuel out of the inside of the van. Now, I wanted to make a really detailed video for those who are asking, but if you're a little impatient and you just wanna see some specific stuff, I have time tagged all of the different sections of the tour in the description. So head there and go check out what you want. All right, we're gonna go in the cab very briefly. It's a normal transit, you've seen it all. So we're gonna skip over all the detail. But a couple little features up here that uh, I've added. Um, so I took out the little tray there and added this little switch panel. We've got a uh, front light bar and a reverse light bar there. The other little thing I've added here, and this is something that I really have a big complaint about with the uh, the new transits is there's nowhere to put a big insulated thermos. They used to have this awesome cup holder here, but whatever these panels are for, they're not there. It doesn't fit in there. The driver, or sorry, the passenger side does have the nice cup holder. Um, so Ford would be great if we could get that back on the driver's side. But anyway, ended up making this little hoop to uh, hold the water bottle in there. It works just fine. Let's see the inside in the back. So we come around to the passenger side here, open up our nice custom three foot wide side door coming from the slider door on the old transit. I really didn't want to have a really skinny, awkward RV door. So I had a uh, Unicell, the company that made the box, uh, make this custom three foot wide door. And they even were able to put it into the exact location I wanted it. So uh, that was super critical for my build. So the box van comes factory with uh, an inch and a half pine plank wood floor. Now that's a really nice platform to build off of. If you go look at my build series videos, uh, you can learn, learn more on that. But what that allowed me to do is build up a uh, nice thick subfloor. So I actually have three and a half inches of uh, foam board insulation here half inch layer of plywood, and then I have this vinyl flooring on top. But the cool thing is that leaves me the ability to build this nice little step here, uh, four inch height difference. And this is really great when you come inside, take your shoes off. Uh, I kind of have that as my policy, not to sound like a neat freak, but I kind of am. And uh, it just does a really good job at keeping the rest of the van super clean. So everything you see in here right now, this is really how it looks all the time. Uh, I did not tidy it up super crazy uh, for the video. I just do a really good job at keeping it clean all the time. We'll start in the kitchen right here. Uh, this is pretty cool. I've got these under cab lights here. These are really fantastic when you're cooking or just want nice dim lighting at night. Then of course, we have this nice big stainless steel sink, nice farmhouse style faucet here. Uh, I put in this uh, dish soap pump and of course we've got some hand soap here. Just the simple things in life really make a big difference. These cheap little plastic uh, items you find at Walmart and stuff, they really make life a lot easier. But anyway, anyone who says they think a big sink in a van is a dumb idea, you're wrong. This is so fantastic. I can get a bunch of dirty dishes, get them cleaned up nice and easily here. So with that, we've got a couple cool things on the side here. We have our uh, diesel, he diesel heater controller, uh, carbon monoxide detector, We've got three switches here. This one right here turns on the water pump and we'll get more into that system later. But then this one 
We've got an air compressor and a tank that's all mounted underneath there. And this one is just an under uh, cabinet lighting, which we'll leave on and then you'll get to see it in a sec. So to fill my water tank, um, we've got an inlet here. Uh, down here, we've got an air outlet so we can plug in our air hose and just flip that switch and we're good to go. And then right here is the diesel heater vent. When I'm done with riding, I put my boots or any wet gear right here where it's all nice and waterproof. Turn the vent right at it and that stuff is dry in like 20 minutes. So uh, you don't have to worry about wet boots and stuff the next day. Let's go into these upper cabinets. These, I'll admit, are not perfectly set up yet, but they get the job done. Up here, I've kind of got a little charging station set up. We've got the Canon camera batteries. We've got the little GoPro battery charger. And usually I just toss the GoPro up here. Kind of weird to mix it with the appliances, but it was very convenient. It's been working fine. I do love having this toaster. Uh, I boil water quite often for making oatmeal and uh, other things, of course. And then just some simple pans here. One pot, one pan, uh, one cutting board. That's all I found I really need. All of these cabinets are on soft close hinges. And then I used these magnets here, which uh, click into those little uh, washers I screwed in. It's a little slow, but you get that really nice satisfying click. And they're pretty sturdy. I could always add more, but after 17,000 miles of driving already, I've not had a single cabinet door open ever. Never had anything fall out. These little uh, low profile handles have been awesome. In hindsight, I do kind of wish I just did a little uh, router cutout on the bottom here so I could open them like that, but also I wouldn't be able to do that on these bottom cabinets. So it all just kind of made sense to make it all the same. But in here, it looks like a total mess, but it's actually perfectly fine for what I need right now. Got all my silverware in here. All the dishes I could ever need here, a set of four. I only really ever use one or two. One for me, one for a friend of each thing. And I got my seasonings here and all that stuff. Up here, we got kind of like first aid, uh, extra fluids. We got some like peanut oil, um, extra dish soap, Ziploc bags. I don't really access all that. It's kind of more of like a junk drawer. But the big important thing about all of this is I have these little lips here. So you can see there's actually about a quarter inch lip, um, but enough where these things can't slide out. So that really takes all the stress away from the doors having to hold things in place. And like I said, I've never had an issue with it. It's been super great. Another little convenience feature is of course, a paper towel holder, gotta have that. Got 120 volt power outlet right there. Also, of course, the other one up in that cabinet. Now let's go under the cabinet, a 30 gallon water tank. Above that, a one gallon air compressor tank, little air compressor pump right there. I've got a 12 volt fuse box, which is essentially all of the uh, power for the this side of the vehicle. So you're probably wondering, what do I do for cooking? And it's a very simple solution. I use this incredibly cheap, really easy to set up uh, Coleman camper burner. It uses these little tiny butane things. I get probably one or two weeks of pretty intensive cooking out of one of these little cans. So the butane, it burns really hot um, and it seems really efficient to use. Not having a burner covering up all this space and being in the way when I'm not using it for the 99% of the day I'm in here is really nice. I have thought about doing like a fold up cover and having it kind of just under there so it's ready to go. but. I didn't build it that way, and at this point, it's probably just not gonna happen on this build. Right under the sink here. I'm not super happy with this setup, but it does work for now. I've got just a little four gallon gray water catch tank here. Just drains right from the sink down into there. Unclip that little guy, unscrew this, pour it out, dump it, strap it back in. It's, it's a really easy solution. My only gripe with it is that it uh, only takes maybe two days if I'm really doing a lot of cooking and uh, use of water in here for that to fill up. So then just above that, I've got the uh, nice big uh, North Star water pump here. And the greatest thing about this whole plumbing system is that little tank right there. So there's a little rubber uh, bladder in there. You pressurize one side with air. And then when you turn the faucet on, we'll actually turn the pump on now. You get running water. There's a backup in my system somewhere. I think it's maybe some uh, pipe dope that's clogging it up because it hasn't always done that. But as you can see, pump's not running. 
and it'll burn through about a gallon of water before the pump actually has to turn on. So, so this just saves the pump from uh, switching on and off constantly, uh, which I find really annoying in a lot of RVs that I've been in. So now we've got the pump switching on, turned off. I'll turn off the pump switch and we get quite a bit of water that goes uh, for a while. Another really awesome thing is this custom made uh, manifold that my dad and I made. And essentially all of the plumbing lines run right off of that. You can see I've got a bunch of plugs there so I can always add a hot water line or uh, another appliance, whatever may need some water. It's super easy to plumb in. Another great thing is uh, right here, this is a drain line. So to winterize my whole water system, she's a little tight. All I have to do is open that and it all flushes out every single water line in the van, drains out the floor. Probably the easiest winterization you could ever imagine. Right under that, I've got the uh, diesel heater here. It's a five kilowatt. As you can see, really simple, just running that straight vent out to the side here where it vents into the uh, footwell. That's been incredible in this whole big setup. I actually find that it's almost too much with how well insulated everything is. I've been in zero degree weather and this thing is hardly even breaking a sweat to keep it 65 or 70 degrees in here. All right, under the van, showing the uh, diesel heater uh, rigging underneath here. We've got the exhaust coming out that hole here. Goes all the way back there, pops out by the tire. And then we've got the uh, intake there. I've got this little shroud to uh, protect from road debris, moisture, all that stuff when you're driving, coming in. Uh, and then we've got the fuel line. There is a high temp silicone line wrapped around the standard fuel line because it gets very hot in this uh, chamber right here. And that of course connects to the uh, fuel pump and fuel filter. Um, got a little valve here on the tank. So if I ever need to service this, I can just turn that off. Uh, up here is a fill neck, which I'll show on the outside at the end. Um, there's a little fill port, so you can go up to a standard gas pump, uh, pump it in there, goes into the top of the tank. And then this right here is a little fuel level check line. So uh, makes it super easy to know exactly how much fuel you have. That's come very much in handy. It's an aluminum welded racing fuel cell. Pretty nice. It's uh, 10 gallons, I think. It's nine or 10 gallons, one of the two. Is this stainless uh, fuel fill cap. So you just unscrew that. And then unfortunately, since this is about the same level as the uh, inlet on the fuel tank, I have to put a little hose and funnel in there so it doesn't just spill out, but uh, pretty small price to pay for how well it works. So no, I do not yet have hot water. Uh, I'm just running cold. And to be honest, it has not seem to be at all an issue. It really doesn't bother me even for the showers. Another nice little convenience feature is just a towel hook here for the kitchen towel. Absolutely love that. So looking toward the front of the van now, up here I've got my little battery monitoring system. Um, this thing I honestly don't even look at because I have enough solar and battery where the thing pretty much just stays charged all day and at night it hardly drains down. I think the lowest I've seen is a uh, maybe around 70% battery life left. Um, so only using 30%, pretty good. Uh, we'll get more into that in another video. But up here, this overcab storage is really awesome. I've got a big uh, double wide sleeping bag here. Keep my little Bluetooth speaker, big Bluetooth speaker rather, and my comforter for sleeping. And then just some other mis miscellaneous stuff uh, tucked up there. Now, this blanket, what is it? What does it do? It's simply an insulation, both for sound and uh, thermal insulation through the cab. It's this double thick uh, layered up sound blanket I actually got from like a music store, but the thermal insulation properties of this thing is also insane. It can be 120 degrees in the cab with the sun shining through there. And I've got a nice cool 70, 75 degrees back here when I got the, uh, the overhead fans running. I wanted a hard door initially, but I'm actually really glad I went with the soft thing. It's lighter. It doesn't rattle. The, the sound reduction properties when you're driving are really incredible. And uh, it's just super easy. If you want to open it up, just flip it up and stuff it up here. Doesn't work too great when I have all the other stuff up there, but good enough. Pretend that looks neater right now. 
and we'll leave that open to get a little more light right now. And then just over here, I've got my wardrobe. This thing has been phenomenal. My last fan build, I was essentially living out of a duffel bag, which was really annoying. So having this big compartment to uh, put all my clothing is really wonderful. Uh, I've got this cheap little uh, LED rechargeable light from I think it was like Home Depot. And the cool thing about this is it actually has a uh, motion sensor. So it runs on, I think, about a 10 second timer, but you can see the little light gap through there. It should turn off any second. There it goes. So turned off now, but when I open it, it turns right back on. Right under that, uh, I've got this big, deep, two foot deep storage compartment. Uh, I pretty much just keep my toiletry uh, stuff there. I've got like a Theragun, and then the rest is just stuffed with a bunch of pretty much seasonal gear, uh, jackets, hats, gloves, uh, cold weather stuff that I don't really access too much. And just below that, we've got this massive two foot cube uh, safe here. It's got two levels. I can store a bunch of camera bags, laptop, computer, just a bunch of stuff in there. It is incredibly deep. My whole arm, I can barely reach the back of it. And that's been really wonderful to have there. Now, one of my favorite features of the whole van, and that is this dinette set here. So I've got a bunch of food storage uh, and a nice shelf up there. Got the nice Max Air fan right above the table right here. Now, the great thing about this is these are actually pretty wide. Um, I've actually squeezed two people side by side, as you can see, if you're sitting right on the edge here, you can easily fit another person right there. Same with the other side there. And then you've got this big wide table. This is actually just like an off the shelf card table that I cut the legs off. Um, and that kind of reveals our next feature about it is how it folds up um, so it can come out of the way. Now, a lot of people have already talked smack from the build series about the uh, hanging it right here. But let me put this into perspective because you obviously haven't sat in the van yet. When you're sitting here and you're working or doing anything, it does not interfere at all. You can look outside, the straps aren't in the way, um, and it gives you so much support. Like this thing is real. It's more rigid than the table. The table is gonna break before these straps budge at all. So I really like it. I think it's better than a, uh, a table leg going to the floor because the amount of times I'm getting out of here that I would stub my toe or kick a table leg, horrible. And then if you're like, oh, well, you could just do like a cantilever thing from the wall there. Well, there's numerous reasons why I wouldn't do that. But even if it would work out structurally and all that, then you'd be bumping your knee in here. I love having all this free space, doing whatever I want, not having to worry about uh, stubbing my leg. I also designed these seats so they actually have some tilt back on the seat. This is not flat. There's about a two inch rise from back to front. And then of course these wedges back here uh, give you a nice kind of relaxed uh, reclined seating position as well. And again, all my shelves up here, I really don't believe in covers for shelves. Um, I think it's just unnecessary complexity. When you open them, you always have interferences in tight spaces. They can rattle. Uh, my solution uh, is just to have, again, a little lip right here. So soup can, nothing can slide out. Again, 17,000 miles of driving already, and I've never had a single item. Okay, that's a lie. I had maybe one or two items before that came out, but that's because one of my friends thought that was a good idea or something like that. But as long as everything is put in a place where it's got this lip to catch it, uh, everything's all good there. As we go to the back of the van, let's admire these awesome skylights. So this is all natural light coming in right now. Um, the box, the unicell box comes with a three foot wide section that they do not put this white gel coat on and they just leave it the raw fiberglass. So you actually get natural light in here. If you watch the build series, you already know, but these switches right here, turn on these extra LEDs, one for the front, one for all the rear LEDs. They're all on dimmers, which is gonna look really weird because you're gonna see them flicker, but uh, you obviously don't realize that flicker in person. Another big convenience thing, and in my opinion, if you're in the van, you gotta do a bunch of these little, uh, little things to just make your life easy. But we've got the USB outlet there and we've got our uh, phone charging cable. Uh, 
very accessible. So if you're sitting right here, plug in. Normally I actually have a longer one, but that cable just broke. So I just replaced it with this one for now. Cool little idea here. So you don't accidentally yank your uh, cord out and damage that is I put one of these little uh, knobs from actually these cargo nets here and just wrap it around and then you can tug on this and it doesn't move anything. Now let's go to the back. Uh, back here, you guys know I love my cargo nets. If you've uh, followed me at all on my old build series, had to put these in again. Basically every, uh, every bungee net here is a separate set of riding gear. Got the net full of gloves right there, shin guards, elbow pads in there. Right under that, we've got the Iceco VL75 Pro Dual Zone uh, fridge freezer combo here. There is nothing in it right now because, like I said, I am uh, not really living on the road. I'm just staying at my parents for a few weeks. This thing's been really awesome, though. One thing I do really like about this, though, this is actually why I ended up going with it. Yes, Iceco did sponsor this and send this to me for the build, but I did all my research and decided this is the one I was going to get regardless. It's got... You can open it up that way. You can open it up that way. It's really sweet. So normally if I'm just grabbing something quick, I open it up this way. If I'm like unloading from the grocery store, I open it up that way and then it holds. It doesn't really stay up there with the cargo nets, um, which I kind of thought was gonna be an issue at first, but then I'm like, oh yeah, we can just do it this way. It also acts as a great seat when I'm getting ready to ride the bikes. I can throw my boots on, socks, whatever I'm doing here and uh, it just makes a nice little extra seat. Now, on to the good stuff that most of you are probably here for. We've got the garage. I can fit uh, three full-size bikes in here, no problem. We've got a shower right over here, so even when three bikes are in here, I can still access the shower perfectly well. This has just been a phenomenal system here. I've got this little bike rack set up. You slide the rear wheel in between two of these, these are fully adjustable, so I can kind of set it up for whatever bike arrangement I need. What that does is gives you a lot of really good side stability. Uh, right now, since I only have two bikes at this time, I just strap up my little camping chair right there for lack of better place to put it. So the reason I back the bike in, and yes, it's a little more awkward uh, to load that way, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. But if you go in forward, you got this handlebar sticking out. So if we could just imagine that handlebar, but sticking out here, uh, let alone adding a third bike, that blocks all your access off right here. So backing them in, the handlebars stay way out of the way. I can walk all around in here. There's so much room back here. Another thing about backing them in is I can get away, especially with this bike rack system, with just using one strap per bike. So as you can see, to the fork, down to my little uh, hooks there. We'll get more into that later when I go to do the actual load and unload but it's super convenient, really easy. More on that later. Up here, I've got my little trash bag. Uh, anyone who's done van life or camper van life knows using these little grocery bags as your trash bags are phenomenal because when you go to fill up with gas, you throw it away when it's full and you don't have to find like a dumpster or anything. So it looks a little tacky. Yeah, definitely not the nicest looking thing, but it sure is convenient. It stays out of the way. These are just all my uh, extra grocery bags, which to be fair, I could probably stuff somewhere a little less ugly. Tons more organization storage here. Uh, I used all these plastic bins. The shelf was made to fit these exactly. I've got these little buckle straps here which hold them in. And then you can just slide them out. Also, there's a lip on each one of these. So even if you don't strap it, the bin can't come out. But the straps, of course, with a little more weight for bike parts and stuff, uh, it's nice to have that extra sense of security. And then I just keep some kind of random other parts, some, some big zip ties here, uh, a little bike lock. Uh, we've got the, the map gas burner here, extra coolant, oil, rubber gloves, pretty much stuff that you just need to uh, access day to day while you're uh, running and maintaining uh, the dirt bikes. And then I actually just added these other cargo nets over here. I put my rain jacket in there so if it starts raining and I'm all muddy, I don't have to go up into the living area and find something. And then also uh, just a bunch of terry cloth towels for bike washing, uh, cleaning up messes, whatever you may need there. Look to the other side and we've got this really nice uh, helmet hooks. So I made all of these. I can fit up to four helmets. 
I only need two helmets, so I use the other uh, hooks there, one for my chest strap, and then one for a helmet bag, which is just full of spare goggles and uh, little helmet accessories, spare visors, stuff like that. Right below that, um, we actually have another uh, air fitting there. So there's an airline that runs all the way through the wall, back to the cabinet, to the air compressor tank. Now, right below that, I've got my uh, Crescent tool kit, which is just like a standard uh, big socket kit. Pretty much all the tools you can need to work on a dirt bike. But then in here, I uh, those are held, by the way, by that little buckle strap I just undid. Then you can slide it out. Stuff to do fork seals, axle wrench, spark plug wrench, brake bleeder, little saws, uh, tire irons. Kind of the more common stuff that you might need to use. Uh, just keep that nice and accessible. And then next to that, we've got the shower. Holy crap, this thing has been so incredible. It's a single piece stainless steel backsplash bent. Then there's this nice big tray here. I do use it for storage because to me, it just makes sense to keep everything contained in there. It can't slide out because it's got this nice deep lip there and it just keeps the space really clean. So if I need to shower, it's really pretty straightforward. I just take some stuff out. I also keep my laundry bag in there. Some people have asked what I do with that. Um, but anyway, if I need to shower, saving that for a pee jug. <laughs> That's really not hard. That took all of, what, six seconds if I was using both hands. And then I just hang up this curtain, which I'm gonna set the camera down to do. So I've got these little hooks in the ceiling. And then you just gotta make sure it falls down. There you go. You got the shower set up, ready to go. Crawl in the side here. And a lot of people said that to them it looked really small, which I totally understand in video. But again, I'm six foot one and I have so much space in here. You don't have the curtain all sticking to your sides and stuff. So it's actually really, really been great. When you want to get out, I usually just unhook that, step right out here. And yeah, very simple, easy system. I will admit I want to improve my shower curtain. The only issue with it right now is you cannot open the garage door because the, the track's in the way and of course the door will hit it. There's a quick and dirty way to make it work and at this point it really doesn't bother me. Now, we gotta be efficient with water use. So we made it really easy and essentially just turn uh, this knob on here, get yourself wet, soap up, and then rinse off. I have found I use between one and two gallons depending on how uh, efficient I wanna be. And then down here, I've got a drain plug on that side, which goes to a 10 gallon gray water tank mounted underneath. And then in this corner, I, this one just drains straight through to the ground. If you're not parked perfectly level, pretty much the water will drain to one side. Naturally, almost every time I park, it ends up going to one of the corners without the drain, but luckily you just take your foot and kind of squeegee it in at the end of the shower. It's not a big deal. Now to get water to the shower, we got our kitchen over here. We've got this single piece copper line that goes all the way over and into the shower head right here. I really like the look of this. Initially, I was gonna tuck it behind the wall, but I just think it's a really cool touch, especially with the blue cabinets, having this, uh, this raw copper here. You're probably thinking at this point, where's your bathroom? Why did you not build a bathroom in this whole thing? Well, I really don't find a need to, but in case of emergency, or not even emergency, honestly, I, I use it every so often, uh, but I got this Lugaloo. It's a cheap bucket. It's got a nice little toilet seat. You throw a bag in there that's got this gel. Um, I actually keep those bags all the way up here, but uh, kind of a weird spot for them. But anyway, that's just where they are for now. But anyway, you take off this lid, you put the bag over, you put the poo in there, and then you just zip lock it up and you throw it away at a gas station or whatever. It's so easy. I think I've only used this maybe six times in the past six months. Um, I just don't see any reason to have a big expensive toilet taking up more space. You could also technically use this for a bench or a bike stand even if you had to. But anyway, it's just a really cheap uh, solution that gets the job done for now. Maybe later on I'll look into uh, some sort of other toilet, but for now it works just fine. Now, coming out of the shower, you need your towel. Uh, I just hang it on this little screw right here. And the good thing is, especially in the winter, 
You can get the diesel heater vent to blow hot air at it and it dries very quickly. You can see these exposed wires right here. I'm kind of glad I actually haven't covered this up yet because it gives a good way to show you uh, how my wiring works. But all these panels, I can unscrew and access all my wiring. If I ever needed to fix anything, add more wiring, uh, I don't have to do all this crazy feeding and stuff. But anyway, we've got a bunch of 12 volt wiring here. Uh, and then this is the airline. So the airline, of course, goes all the way through here. More accessible panels. Um, and then they go all the way back there in the cabinets. You get the idea. All of those panels, I can just unscrew, access all my wiring. Uh, and essentially, all the wiring goes down through the floor there under that little panel I was talking about, under the floor in the safe. And that leads us to the power system remove this back cushion and then we will just set this guy to the side flip this up we've got three by 100 amp hour battleborn uh lithium iron phosphate batteries this is way overkill for what i need like i said i've only seen 70 percent i think is the lowest and that's at that's doing like eight hours of intense video editing uh, on my laptop running my uh, hard drive uh, stack fans the heater lights all that stuff and it's just never been strained next component up would be the 2000 watt victron inverter right here is the uh, dc to dc charger so essentially that allows the batteries to be charged when you're driving so the alternator is charging them right here is a uh, solar controller up on the roof i've got 600 watts of solar panels and those essentially just keep things charged all day never even drain any battery during the day if there's any sun available at all really it's like my other 12 volt fuse box here so like i said uh, the one under the cabinet under the sink there that kind of runs all the stuff on the passenger side of the vehicle this one here is pretty much everything on this side so tried to make everything uh, just as accessible and serviceable as possible and that's been great I'm gonna make a whole video on this electrical system and go into really good detail on how you wire it up, the setup of every single specific component, but here's the general idea. All fits very nicely into this little box under the seat. And uh, thank you to Battleborn Batteries for helping me out here. They were a huge sponsor in this build. If you've been following the build series, uh, you already know that by now. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, all the equipment's been awesome, it's been running for six months straight with zero kinks, absolutely perfectly. And now we go to this side. Let's also move this cushion, lift this guy, and of course, another massive storage box. I kind of call this my junk drawer. Um, I've got like my cordless drills and tools. I keep all the oil there, which are also in its own little container. So if they drip, not a big deal. Spare handlebars, just kind of the clunky parts that I don't really need to access too often. In my bins under here, uh, I've got some more storage. This is like all of my electrical stuff. If I have to service anything, spare wire, connectors, anything electrical related. In here, got spare magnets from the cabinets, screws, kind of random hardware stuff. And then in that other one there, I've got uh, pretty much enough tools to uh, pull a crank and a motor, split cases, do anything I need. But I almost never need to access any of those tools. So they just kind of stay tucked away in the bottom. And then between the seats here, uh, very conveniently, Got an outlet tucked away, so I'm working on my laptop. I can plug in there, and it's kind of nice because it keeps the cord out of the way. You're not gonna kick it with your feet. It's kind of protected from spills or anything like that. I think it's time we show you how the bikes are unloaded and then reloaded to show you just how easy that is. It lifts pretty smooth and very effortlessly, and there we've got our bikes. So, just pull out the ramp here. Now, everyone always gives me a hard time on my wooden plank ramp, but if I wanted an aluminum ramp, I would just get an aluminum ramp, but I don't. The great thing about this is it's really skinny, it slides in between the bikes, stays out of the way. It's pretty lightweight. It's really cheap. No one really wants to steal it. Also, it doesn't make a lot of noise rattling around when you're driving, so it's just super versatile. You can also use this if you get stuck as a traction mat. You can use it for leverage uh, if you need to break the beat of a tire. Or uh, I actually use it to help a woman whose toy hauler fell off her truck. I put it under the hitch and was able to pry up and get a bunch of force to get it back on her truck. So it's a very multi-use uh, thing. So back to the straps. Watch how easy this is. And I'm doing it one-handed too, which is not going to lie a little awkward. 
one strap off, hook it there. Second strap, unhook it, hook it back there. The bikes are 100% unstrapped, ready to roll out now. So once you've got them unstrapped, all you gotta do, roll it forward, grab the next one. Uh Now backing it in is definitely a little bit of an art, but with a little bit of practice, it's not so bad. And mind you, I have this set up right now to carry three bikes. Uh, here I only had to load two. If I were traveling with only one or two bikes, uh, of course, I would make the spacing a little better so they don't have to be quite so tight because it is definitely a pinch um, trying to get the wheels backed into where they need to go, but it all works out anyway. So. I haven't even strapped these things down yet, and as you can see, they're standing up by themselves because of that uh, wheel chalk there. Grab a strap here, toss it around the fork, just give it one little pull down, and we're solid. Grab the next one, do the same thing. One little pull, locked in. Super secure, super easy. Uh, I just can't possibly imagine a better way to do it. If you haven't watched the build series, um, what my straps are attached to then is this aluminum angle here. There's a hole about every six inches. Essentially the hooks for the straps just go right into each of one of those holes. And uh, pretty much with this, you want them to be pulling down and back. So back to hold them up against there. They can't roll forward. And then down, of course, to just give it a little bit of compression, which naturally happens when your uh, mount point is down there. What's also been super convenient is this little uh, bar pad here. This is just some uh, memory foam, I believe it was, uh, wrapped in some carpet. It gives a nice little buffer for the handlebar there so it's not banging on the wall. And then it's the little things, like this little hook. So when you're uh, done with the straps, you hook it right there and it stays in place, it's ready for when you're loading the bike back in. And I also put a uh, piece of uh, angled aluminum here with the same thing, holes every six or so inches. So you can uh, put a hook anywhere along the back here. And the best thing about this whole system, I would say, is that when it's unloaded, the floor is totally free of things to stub your toes, things to trap dirt. It's just a perfectly smooth uh, sheet of this vinyl coin mat, which is very easy to clean. So now you're probably thinking, where the heck do I sleep? We've got the hidden Murphy bed right here. You saw earlier how easily that table folds up. So that is actually folding into the bottom of the bed. Uh, I've got these little pin locks here. Pull that out, flip that down, that frees that up. Come to this side here, pull that out, flip that down, freeze up that side. Grab these hooks from the ceiling right there. Hook that there, hook that there. Got these little soft loops. And then all we do is lift up, pull out, and then push to the wall. So easy, so convenient. This is a full XL bed. So uh, a queen bed would be about right up to here. So it's just a little skinnier, um, but I intentionally did that so I could still walk through uh, between the kitchen, get in and out of the cab do whatever I need to there. Um, I've got these little uh, corner straps here that hold the mattress when you lift it in place. They are a little ugly, but it was the easiest solution I could come up with. So I keep my pillows right up there. When it's bedtime, I just grab those, throw them onto the bed, and then up here, which typically this is just down, I've got my comforter. So take that out, throw it on the bed, and ready to sleep. It is so easy and convenient. Um, watch even with one hand. I can lift it up and once it's up here, this is kind of the tough engineering feat actually. Uh, once it's up here, you see it interferes there. So actually what you have to do is push it down and then it tucks in. On the very bottom corner there, there are actually some gas springs which you can barely see right there. So this thing weighs about 120 pounds. So those gas springs in each corner of the bed there are what supports the weight and the reason you have to then push it down to get under the uh, the storage area up there. When you fold the bed down, it just rests on the uh, little supports here on the side of my seats, one on each end. In the morning, when you wake up, it's as simple as pulling this out, lifting up, 
push it down, pop in that little pin lock, pop in this pin lock, grab your cushions on there, one right here, unhook both of these. them up on the ceiling, flip that guy open, and you are back in dinette mode. So easy. Now, a lot of people, uh, myself included, uh, if you asked me on my last build, uh, are a lot like, well, when I'm tired, I want a fixed bed, I want to pull over and just be able to get into it. It's really annoying to have to set it up. And there's definitely some merit to that. I agree with it. But with this, there's a couple really good pros. For one, when you have company in here, if you're muddy, you're riding, you're sweaty, whatever, no one is touching your bed. They physically can't. The mattress, the sheets, everything, it's so well protected from dust, from anything in here. The other thing is it forces you to clean up every time you go to bed or you go to set up your bed. You can't have stuff here in the morning uh, to deal with. You have to put it away to get the bed down, which seems like annoying, but this is what my van looks like all the time because I'm just forced to clean up. Um, another great thing is obviously the use of space. I get this nice big dinette where I can fit four people very comfortably, a huge table, and I get a nearly queen size bed, still have access to my kitchen. Like there are so many pros that come with, uh, with using this setup. I just really thought it was a no brainer once I really thought about it. And now that I'm using it, I for sure would not have it any other way. And that's the end of the tour. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I'm sure proud of the build. It turned out way better than I could have ever imagined. If you have any questions or there's something that I didn't cover, please drop a comment, let me know, and maybe I'll do a Q&A video. Also be sure to check out the four build series episodes if you haven't already seen them, and be sure to subscribe. I will have more content on the electrical system and uh, other things van related. Thanks a lot for watching.